Hello there. Thank you so much that you took the time to tune in to ICC's online sermons. I hope you're going to be blessed by what you're going to be watching. And right after that, I have something important to share with you. So do stay tuned and we hope you will enjoy your viewing. As you can see, the title of the message is The School of a Practical Christianity. School of Practical Christianity. And I'll explain to you what this message is all about. The verse that is the key verse for our discussion this morning is from the book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 28 rather, verses 18 to 20. This is, I would say, one of the most important tasks that has been left behind uh, to the church. And Jesus is expecting us to understand this. This is what Jesus said when he, before his ascension, before his after his resurrection. He said, then Jesus uh, called uh, the disciples to himself and he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He said, therefore, go and... Okay, try that again. He said, go and... He said, go and... Okay, let me get your attention again. Did Jesus said, try and... Did Jesus say that, uh, if possible? Okay, very few of you answering me. Come on, talk to me. Did Jesus say, if possible? No. Did Jesus say, it's a good idea? No. Did Jesus say, maybe if, you are pos if you're able? No. Did Jesus say, after you get confirmed and after you get baptized? He said, he, he said uh, one word, go. W what does it mean to you when somebody tells you, Go and do this. Okay, your, 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 your boss tells you, go and fetch me the file. What do you do? <laughs> Why? Why? Why should you obey? <laughs> well, if I don't, maybe I might lose my job. Isn't that correct? It's, it's very important, you know, we go through this Sunday after Sunday, we have a sermon, we talk about it, hey, we come to church. We do this, of course, you're supposed to go to church, you're a Christian. But oh, seriously, what does it mean to us in terms of the actual command that the Lord gave us? What does it actually Because Jesus says, therefore, go and make disciples. Did he say go and give birth to disciples? I mean, we thank God for babies and, you know, uh, it's very nice to, uh, that the church is growing. We're having more and more kids. Uh, Tamomi used to be out here singing songs and so on. Right now, she has a baby and during the sermon, she's very careful to make sure that the baby doesn't cry. It's okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and more, more and more people, David and so on, have just had babies. It's okay. You know, Christianity also grows by that way and we're happy about it. But he said, go and... Go and... Go and you see, it's so important for us to understand that disciples are meant to be made. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. How many nations do we have in ICC? Maybe uh, about 30 or 40. It's difficult to, to, to count. It's always changing, and, you know. Of all nations. And then he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all, everything that I have taught or have commanded you. And surely I will be with you to the very end of the age. We like that part. I like the fact that Jesus is going to be with me. Hallelujah. He's going to. But the, it follows a command, a commandment. Now, it's interesting because earlier on I asked you, I said, hey, tell me. What was the most important thing? And then, uh, you know, a one word, if you can condense Christianity. And really, this is, of course, biased to the message, but if you can condense Christianity to one word, really, that one word is discipleship. It is about becoming a disciple. And that disciple is not born. It is not just because I changed religion. I used to be Buddhist, now I become Christian. I used to be Hindu, I become Christian. I used to be Muslim, I become Christian. I was atheist, I become... It's not about conversion. It's about discipleship. And that involves every one of us. It involves me, it involves you. It doesn't matter who you are in the church, what your status or your rank or your position or your power. 
It's all about discipleship, disciple making. I am meant to be making disciples. You are meant to be making disciples. And the question now is, how do we go about making disciples? Are you following? Is there a method? Is there a system? Is it, uh, there, there's no fixed way, but is it possible to make it a little bit easier to actually make disciples? Is there a possibility? Thank God the answer is yes. Jesus spent about three years making disciples and demonstrating to his disciples how disciples are being made. And then he went on. And the thing is that uh, it's important to find out if churches or we, ICC, can come out with a, if I can mention the word, systematic way of guiding people as to how disciples can be made. How disciples can be made. So, I want to mention to you a little bit about what happened when I went to Ghana just this last week. Um, uh, it was nice to be there and uh, I, I was away for five days or so. Um, first of all, the most wonderful thing was that I left Denmark when it was about 13 degrees. When I went to Accra and arrived, it was 28 degrees. So that itself was, you know, it's enough to make you jealous. <laughs> it was just, oh, hallelujah. It was so nice and warm, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. I feel like I arrived in heaven. And of course, uh, we had the conference, and I was one of the speakers. There were actually five of us uh, who were speakers, and I was given uh, three or four sessions. I can't remember to, to share. But normally, when you go to a conference, you're expecting, this is a missions conference, talking about leaders and so on. You're expecting to, to go there and do your part, and then you're gone, which is what I usually do. This time, I decided to sit through the entire conference and listen to others as well, and I just wanted to hear what's going on in, 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 in the mindset. Before I left, I was thinking a lot about, you know, our last, uh, this year's uh, AGM, we had an annual general meeting, for those of you who remember, in uh, April this year, or was it May? And then we decided, uh, and we spoke about different aspects of the church, and I shared with you as a congregation that we have a plan to come with a program of discipleship in the entire church because we've had feedback from different ones. We always take the feedback seriously and we also try to pray and say, God, what is it that you want us to do? You see, it's one thing to get feedback from people. It's another thing to, to really feel in your heart, is this what God wants me to do? Because there's a big difference between a good idea and a God idea. The only one person is with me. <laughs> do you follow what I'm saying? especially in a congregation like this, because we are so many different people with so many different ideas. And, and this could be a recipe for disaster or it could be a recipe for success. The church in Antioch was like that. The church in, in Jerusalem was very, very uh, monocultured uh, Jewish people, but the church in Antioch was multicultural, many people with many ideas. And so the apostles really had a hard time trying to figure out, okay, we have a lot of good ideas, but what do you want God? You see, there's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, unless the Lord builds his house, they that labor, labor in vain. Now, this is also true for many aspects in, in, in your own life. You've got to understand it's the same with your family. If you're trying with your own you know, mind and ideas and so on to build your family, you've got to ask yourself, Lord, are you helping me to build this family? If not, you're laboring in vain. It's the same with your education. Are you helping me, God, with this education? If not, I'm laboring in vain. Are you helping me, Lord, with my job? Otherwise, you'll be laboring in vain. Are you following me? The principle is very important. The principle is, unless the Lord will... It's the same for the church. So sometimes you can have a lot of good ideas. And so I've been asking God, what is your idea? What is it? And he, of course, brought me back to the vision. The vision of what this church is meant to be, which is help you to get in touch with God, others, and your own destiny, which is very important. And so, when I'm done with, I was thinking, okay, we need to come up with a proper discipleship program. We need to have a proper educational system. So we are making disciples. Each and every person who comes to church can, can at least systematically say that I've covered so many lessons. I have a general, good, general knowledge, understanding of Christianity. It's not just, oh, maybe Christian is like this or like that. Are you with me? So I've been thinking about it, and I remember we, we, we did something some years ago, a, a manual I've written that was part of my thesis, actually. Uh, it was a very wonderful manual with about, uh, but it was a little bit too deep and a little bit too heavy to, to use for discipleship. So the thought I had in the back of my mind is that we need to have something in, in, in this teaching when we come back. We need to somehow have a, 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 
a, a, a proper, um, you know, if I can say, systematic uh, teaching school. How do we go about it? And it, it takes work. It takes a lot of, you know, time to, to, to whole revise that, that whole discipleship manual and so on. So, when we were talking about cell groups, and so all of this was in my mind when I was in Ghana, you know, besides doing my thing, I was sitting back and asking the Lord, I said, give me some kind of a confirmation, God. I don't want to do this just because of doing it. Even though I can, I can sit down and write an entire uh, thesis um, overnight, which I've done. What are my thesis? I've, you know, literally wrote it overnight. Believe it or not, my, my PhD thesis. I'm not kidding you. I actually did that. So it's not a matter of ability. You can, I know I can, but is, 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 are you in this God? Are you following me? So I really thought about it. And, I pre- and as I was sitting down in the conference and different ones were talking, two guys were mentioning something very, very specific. In my head, it was two things. One was a discipleship program for the church. Another thing was cell groups. Should we go into it? Should we not go into it? And those of you who have been in ICC long enough, you know we have tried different types of cell groups. And then some were successful, some were not. And then we changed and blah, blah, blah. And so this whole... So when I was sitting down there, one of the first things that hit me was one of the teachers in the conference. He was speaking specifically about discipleship. And he was, you know, talking to the rest of the leaders. And he was telling them why it's important for you to make disciples and not just you know, um, have a, a regular Sunday service. And I sat down there and I told myself, I said, oh my God, how coincident can this be? Seriously, I was just sitting down there, I was, I was mind boggled. And then he, he was showing them a book that he was going, he, that he's using, which has been revised, of course, to the context of his church. And... I looked at the book and it was exactly the manual I've written before, the, the, the title, Making Disciples. And I looked at it and I smiled and said, I cannot believe this. <laughs> and the first thing that, you, that hits you in the book is revised edition. And I thought, of course, it's something that needs to be revised. And I said, Lord, are you really making this clear to me? And I thought about it again and again, and it became so clear. And what was interesting to me was the, the illustration. He had a very interesting illustration. Uh, he, he made a little illustration, and I want to actually repeat or copy his illustration just to bring the point across of why it's important to make disciples. In order to do that, I need two volunteers to make this illustration, all right? I need one volunteer from this side and one volunteer from this side, and you need to come up, and I'm going to ask you, uh, don't worry, very, very simple questions just about the church. Are you ready? Two volunteers, please. while every head is bowed <laughs> and every eyes are closed, okay? One here and one here. You see, he's even getting dressed for the, being a volunteer. <laughs> he's taking all his clothes and... Excellent. Okay, excellent. So just for the sake of those of you who don't know or those who are watching on, on the screen, uh, you are, your name is? Prince. Oh, really? Who's your father? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and your name? My name is Kennedy. Kennedy. Kennedy uh, Prince, for those watching online. All right. We'll start with a very, very simple um, uh, method. All right? So, um, we start with Kennedy first. Kennedy, can, can you remember what was the sermon that was preached last Sunday? Okay. Unfortunately, I wasn't here last Sunday. Ah, okay. Good, good enough. I wasn't here last Sunday, all right? Okay, let's go on to Prince. Prince, what was the sermon that was preached last Sunday? Was last Sunday Family Sunday? No. It wasn't Family Sunday. Uh, I, I wasn't here last Sunday either. Ah, you, there you go. That's a good question. I wasn't here last Sunday. It's true. <laughs> Deal. Okay. Now, go back, going back to Kennedy. Kennedy, what was the title of the sermon that was preached two Sundays ago? Even that one, I wasn't here as well. Okay. Even <laughs> <laughs> Time for confession. <coughs> Prince, okay. what was the title of the sermon two Sundays ago? That one was a family Sunday. Yeah. Yes. There was, was a family Sunday. Yeah, and that okay. was, um, it was about the, the, it was some kind of feedback. We, we did a, we wrote, we wrote on a piece of paper a whole bunch of things that ICC was good at and what ICC could be better at. Okay, yeah. so, so now that you remember, very good. Now, we are going back to what was the title of the sermon three Sundays ago? 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was here, but I can't remember. <laughs> I was here, but I can't remember. That's good. I was here, I can't remember. Go, going to Prince. What was the title of the sermon three Sundays ago? I don't know. <laughs> Pastor's son. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Now, if we were laughing, but if you sit down, because I was doing the same thing when he was asking questions to others, to myself, and I was sitting down, I was even preaching. And I asked myself, goodness, what was it that I preached? <laughs> Are you following? This is to put us all back on, on earth again. And then I realized, I couldn't myself remember what I preached. I know I preached it, it was good. People as usual come and shake my hands and say that was a great sermon. But I just couldn't remember. Because our, our mind has got so much of capacity in terms of long term and short term. And then, I was just wondering, so if, if you can't recall in your memory these things, how then can you pass it on if it needs to be passed on? Right? Now, there comes another part of the test. What I need you to do is, both of you, I'm going to give you a set of numbers. You need to go and try and repeat this number to somebody else. And then... It was Esther. Oh, it was Esther. It was Esther. Ah. Now it comes back. It's been working very hard. What about four weeks ago? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a set of numbers. And then you need to remember this number. And you need to go and repeat to another person. Uh, and I need, I need to see whether they can remember the number. All right? I'll give you... Are you ready for the numbers? Yeah. It's only going to be five numbers. Okay. The numbers you need to remember is 2, mm -hmm. 4, mm -hmm. 6, mm -hmm. 8, 10. Okay. Can you remember that? Yeah. Okay, good. Hang on a minute. Now I need to give you a set of numbers so that you need to repeat to these uh, people over there and that they will be able to remember. Can you remember? Okay, try and, try and remember these numbers, okay? Only five numbers. 39, 47, 58, 20, 103. You said okay? five numbers. Yeah, five numbers, five sets of numbers. 39, 47, 58, 20, 103. All right? Try and remember these numbers. Are you ready? Now go over there and find somebody else and repeat these numbers to them and come back as soon as possible. <laughs> I'm only going to give you a few minutes. Quickly go. Quick, quick, quick. And then we're going to get a feedback. Okay, now. Can you repeat the numbers he gave to you? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ooh, bravo. <laughs> that was easy, right? Okay, now, can you repeat the numbers he gave you? No. <laughs> 24, seven. <laughs> now. 39. No, 29. 38. 39. 29. 38. It, it was 39. 39 45. 47. 45. <laughs> <laughs> 110. 50. <laughs> now, the reason, the, the, the simple illustration is to bring a point across that when something is orderly and systematic, it is possible for you to actually be able to tell somebody else and they can remember. When something is not as orderly and systematic, it is harder. Not that there were no numbers, they were both sets of numbers, except that one was not in a sequence that is easy to remember. Right? And that is why it's difficult to make disciples because what we are being taught in church from Sunday to Sunday sometimes is not in an orderly fashion that you can remember, let alone repeat. Does that make sense? So, thank you so much for the, for the illustrations. <laughs> Give them a hand, please. <laughs> so, when I came back, I realized this. It brought me down to a few facts. One fact is that the anointing of ICC is very, very unique. We have a very special anointing. Um, over the years, we have had literally, all right, literally in terms of numbers, over the years, we have had hundreds, if not thousands, that has passed through the congregation. Isn't that correct? Are you following me? Because we are an international church, we are a city church, people come, people go, it, it, it keeps, our numbers fluctuate a lot. 
from, from, uh, from many people to little people. The reason why it does so is because people come and they go all the time. And we have people like, like uh, our, our brother who was just here. Sometimes they are working in different Sundays or they have different occasions. They can't be here. Someone who comes to church will regularly have events. So the, because of this haphazardness, it's very difficult to be able to uh, quantify uh, the, the congregation or, or qualify the congregations in general speak, generally speaking, whether this is a success or it's a failure or what are we doing. But one thing we cannot deny ICC's anointing is over the fact that we do have many, many nationalities. A lot. On top of that, we do have people that come and go. We can't stop that. Another anointing that ICC has is that we have actually over the years produced many, many different people who are involved in ministries today all around the world. And that is an awesome, awesome anointing that God has given us. And so, we, it's, it's important to understand because if you don't understand your anointing, you're constantly trying to be something else or somebody else. And if ICC as a congregation, we are sitting down here thinking, oh, we've got to be like this church, or we've got to be like that church, or if you come and you said, you know, we've got to try to be like the Methodists, or we've got to be like the, the Lutherans, or like the Catholics, or like... that's not our anointing. If you are a fish and you try to swim, good luck. You're going to die disappointed thinking you're a failure. But if you're a fish and you know you're a fish and you act like a fish, you swim like a fish, you think like a fish, you are successful. That's because that's your anointing to be a fish. If I'm born a man, that's God's intention. If I try to be anything else, you know, well, go and knock yourself out. Likewise, if you're born a woman, we have an anointing to do what we are meant to do. Yeah. And so, so, also every church, because sometimes churches, you know, they try to, 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 to become like somebody else or become like a club of just follow the trends. I want to follow this trend or that trend. You could do what you want. The, the question goes back to what we started with. Is it a good idea or is it a God idea? If it's a good idea, unless the Lord builds his house, they that labor, labor in vain. You're going to be sweating for nothing. A lot of noise, a lot of action, but no movement. That's the anointing we're talking about. So it's important for us to understand what is then ICC's anointing in terms of what has God called us, you and me, as a family to do? What? Is it just you know, the, the usual normal thing? Or do we have an anointing? What we're going to do is that we're going to talk about this thing. We're going to have this uh, concept of what we call school of practical Christianity, which is going to be taught in this congregation, every single one of you. So be prepared because from November, the format of the congregation will be more or less the same, but the teaching will change because we will be have three phases, P1, P2, and P3. Phase one is something that we call school of discovery. All right? And basically, it's a basic a systematic theology. There will be three modules. Uh, module 1, Module 2, and Module 3. And then Phase 2 will be School of Formation that has to do with transformation, where, where your, 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 your character is supposed to be formed. We will all go through that together, and there will also be three, phase, uh, three modules, Module 1, Module 2, and Module 3, in that last second phase. The third phase is School of Ministry, which is two modules, and it may not be necessarily in a congregational setting. It might be in a separate setting, because that is to train you and develop you to go into... Um, uh, ministry and, and be involved in the ministry in a very, very big way, not just in the congregation. There are 52 lessons that makes up module uh, phase one and phase two, and there are 10 lessons that makes up uh, the, the second module, uh, or rather the third phase, which will be, like I said, in a more private setting. The reason why we want to bring you through this is because the, each one of you who lis receives one particular lesson, you will be immediately ready to teach this to another person. The, this, the student, after the, be, uh, from the beginning of lesson one, will immediately be empowered to be a teacher by the end of lesson one. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. That, that's the way it's meant to be. It's meant to be simple. It's meant to be systematic, and it will only all the lessons will only uh, use f questions. What, why, where, how, when, who. Six questions, which will, be, which will be your friends, for every single topic. So you can answer all those six questions for every topic, for these particular lessons. And at the end of every uh, module, module one at the end, maybe there are ten lessons, we'll give you a little test. 
So uh, you don't have to take the test if you don't want to. But if you want to, you can take a test and that test will help you to be able to have the possibility to say, where am I in this particular uh, lesson? And if you pass the test, you don't have to take the exam, but if you pass the test, we will certify you as a certified teacher of uh, SPC, which is basically the School of Practical Christianity. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. All right, what are these lessons? Now, uh, it's going to be exciting because you're going to come to, to church to be trained. It's going to change your mindset of church because church is not just, I come, I sit down, I, if I feel good, yeah, that was nice. If I don't feel good, yeah, that's not. You're going to be coming to be trained to make disciples. And anybody who missed the lesson, like, for example, you said, oh, I wasn't here last Sunday, no problem. Whoever who was there last Sunday, they can sit down with you for half an hour during coffee break and so on and go through those lessons and then you're, you're, you're up with it. We'll have a, what we call a attendance sheet so that everybody who comes to the lessons can sign an attendance sheet. We can see which lessons you missed and help you to make up for those lessons even though they will be recorded. Now, it's a bit difficult for you to see maybe because uh, just to go through, I'm not going to you know, take time just to run through. The School of Practical Christianity will, in phase one, will cover the module one, which is foundations. Module one is 10 lessons. We'll be talking about the Bible, the devil and his host, God and his host, blood covenant, faith, salvation, prayer and fasting, repentance, baptisms, baptisms, because there are many kinds of baptisms, and communion. And not just water baptism, there's being baptized in the spirit, there's being there's a whole, there's a whole scripture to it, whole verse. So why do we do it this way? Because first of all, you must understand the Bible. We're going to go and explain to you what, why, who, where, how, when. All of these questions will be covered according to the way you need to understand. And we need to understand, there's, uh, why do we have to talk about the devil? Because there is a war, there was a war which you and I are caught into. And if you don't understand that, you, you'll not realize what's going on. And then of course you need to understand God. Who are these two parties, this, this war that's been going on? God and his host. We're going to talk about the blood covenant because a lot of people don't understand in today's concept. We, we, we talk about agreements, and, but the word covenant is something that is lost. If you do not understand the covenant, you will not understand the seriousness of what the Lord has done for you and I in this day and in this age. Amen? So there's a lot we're going to cover. And then in phase, uh, module two of, uh, of uh, phase one, we'll talk about healings because there's body healing, healing of the body, uh, soul, and spirit, which is uh, deliverance. We'll talk about life transformation, Christ-likeness, what it means to be Christ like Christ. We'll talk about praise. We'll talk about worship. We think they're two things exactly the same, but actually completely different things. And then we'll talk about the church. We'll talk about servanthood. We'll talk about leadership. We'll talk about teaching and preaching, which is what disciples are meant to. Each one of us are meant to be teaching and preaching, not just one person. And we'll talk about principles of giving. There are many principles, the seven principles. Most of you in ICC know about it. We'll talk about blessings and curses because the Bible talks about breaking curses. And the, talk, the Bible talks about blessing. How do we remove curses by blessing? Not, not about voodoo and being afraid of, uh, of, of witchcraft, but God has given us the, the, the ability to break the powers of darkness. Can you say amen to that? That's phase two. And then, uh, mo uh, that's phase one, sorry, module two. And then module three, we'll talk about home groups. We'll talk about angels and demons. We'll talk about the second coming of Jesus, about heaven, hell, eternal judgment, and the great commission. These are the things we're going to talk about, which will complete the school of discovery. All the basics you ever need to know about Christianity. In a snapshot, each one of you will be given notes when you sit down so you can pile them up week after week so that it becomes your whole big uh, manual and you'll be actually following it systematically one after another, just the school of discovery. Every Sunday there'll be two lessons in church during praise and worship. Uh, not during praise and worship. After praise and worship. Two lessons and it'll be, it'll be amazing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, and, and maybe sometimes, some Sundays, if we have the time, we will do some more lessons after the service, but we'll try to cover it as fast as possible. We won't take 52 weeks to do it. We'll take less time. The more time you have, we will cover it together as a church. We will all grow. Hallelujah. And have a systematic. So somebody comes to church new and says, oh, I'm new. I just uh, joined this church and, uh, and I don't know, uh, what, you know uh, how to follow the, 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 the teachings. You can tell them, no worries. I have all the notes. I'm ready to meet you every Sunday during coffee, after the service or before the service. You just come or in the week, wherever you are, you're free. 
Let us meet for just half an hour. I sit with you. I open up my notes. I teach you. Making. Making. Did you say making cakes? <laughs> making. Did you say making fufu? <laughs> making. Making. You will be making disciples. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes. Systematically. Systematically. And then we'll move on to the phase two, which is a school of formation, character development. What are we going to do? We'll deal with that. We'll talk about, first of all, the fruit of the Spirit, which is in the, in the first module. We'll talk about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Exactly what, why, who, where, how, when. Exactly so you understand that we as Christians are supposed to bear these characteristics in the daily life that we're living in. Hallelujah. That's just phase one. Phase two, we're going to talk, uh, module, module one. Module two, we're going to talk about the, the, the motivational gifts. We're going to be talking about prophesying. It actually talks about inspired preaching. We're going to talk about serving, teaching, and encouraging, giving, leading, mercy. All of these are motivational gifts. And we're going to discuss what does it actually mean? Because all of us are, gift, are meant to, all of us are meant to prophesy or serve or teach or encourage or give. But some of us have that gift, an outstanding gift. You need to understand like you understand this, you need to understand your spiritual gifting. Hallelujah. Amen. And then module three in school of uh, uh, um, formation, we're going to be talking about uh, the, the, the gifts, the spiritual gifts. We're going to talk about the message of wisdom, message of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, gifts. Can you see that? It's plural. Gifts of healing, miraculous powers, prophecy. This prophecy is a little bit like inspired teaching. And then... Uh, this distinguishing between spirits, which is a beautiful, beautiful lesson. Everybody needs to understand this, how to discern. Uh, women have something called intuition. When you meet, uh, some, because of your protective, mothering nature, sometimes men, you know, you, you have this issue whenever a woman says, I don't feel good about this person, or I don't feel good. Sometimes men, you say, what's, what's the logic? That's because they have intuition. Men don't have that, but women do. And so, but, but all, both men and women, we have something beyond uh, intuition. We have something called distinguishing of spirits. When you go into a place or you meet somebody or in a situation, your spirit tells you something is not right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That is important. That's something that's so lacking. And we'll teach you and help you to understand that it's possible to be able to develop this. And then we'll talk about the different kinds of tongues, speaking in tongues, because people are very for it or totally against it. Understand it. It's a gift. It's free. And understand it. And there's also such a thing called interpretation of tongues. And I hope and pray that we will know and intelligently, logically be able to use these gifts in the church. Last but not least, we'll go into the uh, school of ministry, which is the last uh, uh, phase. This is phase three. We'll talk about the ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. That's module one. And module two, we'll talk about evangelism, missions, starting a home group, starting a ministry, starting a church. We want you to be empowered. So if you've completed this, wherever you go from here one day, you will be easily be able to start a cell group or start a ministry, be it connected to a church or not, and even be able to start a church. We want you to become church planters the moment you leave ICC. And so nice to have three people ready to do that. I said we want you to be able to plant churches when you leave ICC. Amen. Amen. Or maybe even right here in the country. Maybe you move to Aarhus or you move somewhere. And then you are prepared. You have been given the tools to make disciples. I want to bring you through that as a congregation. Every single person. Hallelujah. And I'm so excited about it because this is going to help us to tap into that anointing that God has given us as a congregation. Whether you like it or not, this has been happening. It's just not been organized. But that's the reason why God brings people to this church. We, have, we are a different church with a different anointing. We are not an ordinary church. We are not a normal church. We are a church with a very, very special anointing. And that's the purpose why you're here, why God has brought you here. You might be thinking, oh, God brought me to Denmark to work. You know, God brought me to Denmark to study. God brought me to Denmark because of my husband or my wife. No, no, no. He brought you because of your divine destiny. Because of your destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So like I told you, ICC is no ordinary church because our vision has always been get in touch. Get in touch with God, get in touch with, your, with others and with your own destiny. And, our, and, and we, we've always said that we want our Christianity to be practical and down to earth. I, I, I honestly, you know, I thank God traveling around the world always opens my eyes because it makes me see and realize there's very few places in the church, in, in, the, in, in the church world, to be honest, you have people as down to earth and practical like this church. I'm not bragging, I'm not boasting. It's the truth. Because we are so normal. <laughs> yeah, we are so ordinary. And we've taught you this, uh, how about being, to be naturally spiritual and to be spiritually natural. That's, I believe with all of my heart that is how Jesus was. I, I believe Jesus was so spiritual, but he was he's doing it in a natural way. He was so natural, but in a spiritual way. When Jesus was walking around, the kids would approach him. Children didn't run away from Jesus. I'm telling you, when children run away from you, you better ask yourself, what is wrong? <laughs> Are you with me? Yes. I, I, I think even the animals uh, responded to Jesus. There was a donkey that had never been ridden before. Have you ever tried to... Uh, those, how many of you have ridden a horse before? Most of the horses you've ridden before has been, you know, tamed, so you can sit on it. Do you know that? And, 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 and same thing, even a donkey is worse. Imagine a donkey that has never been ridden before. Even that donkey responded to Jesus. Even animals responded to him. Isn't that amazing? Think of it. Seriously, think of it. And that is why it's important for you to understand that Jesus wasn't just floating. Some people think that Jesus was always walking around, you know, it, like as if he, he was just standing and, and he was just moving and, he, and his legs were just... Mm, Mm, you know, Jesus is just moving. It wasn't like that at all. He was walking, his, 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 his feet was on the ground. It was very, very natural. That's how uh, Christianity is supposed to be. Not meeting people and, and suddenly, you know, come up with, 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 with scriptures and, and, and behaving, you know, holier than thou. Have you ever met people like that, you know, that are so religious, they make you... you bleh. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. This is, I don't understand. And, and you, do you think that will be magnetic and, and, and attracting somebody to Christ? Of course not. They look at they, they, they take one look at you and the way you behave and the way you are so holier than thou, and they will ask themselves, if that is what Jesus is all about, I want nothing to do with it. And unfortunately, you've misrepresented Christ. You see, that is the problem with the church sometimes. The packaging. The, the product is right, the product is Christ, but the way we package it sometimes makes people turn away from it. We have not shown the real Christ. If we show people the real Christ that is in us, that is changing us, and that we have weaknesses too, but He wants to help us and He wants to change us, that will tell people, I need that. I need that. Last night we had a gathering in, in my neighborhood. Once a year we have different neighbors. We all come together. Everybody brings some food. It's like a potluck. You know, we eat together and so on. And it's very interesting because sometimes the conversation becomes, you know, we, as neighbors, you talk about everything under the sun. And every once in a while there is an injection uh, uh, opportunity where I know God opens the door. And there was one particular thing. We were all talking about health and food and, you know, vegetarians, non-vegetarians and blah, blah, blah. And of course I joined the conversation. And then I mentioned something that I know that was the, the moments God gives you those moments to help everybody to think. And one of the moments was, I said, you know, but the fact of the matter is, no matter how healthy you are, no matter how well you eat or exercise and so on, let's face the facts. You and I know this. Nobody knows when you're going to die or when a child is going to be born. The actual time, the actual day, nobody knows. And everybody was like, yeah, yeah, that's also true. That's also to, it's to bring them back to eternity. And then we're talking about death and, you know, me in my normal way, I always like to bring a joke. I was joke, bringing a joke about death of a couple meeting, you know, God in heaven and, 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 and so on. And I brought the message across that it's not just death. There's something else you need to expect after death. That is judgment. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. You always get an opportunity. So, 
and the an amazing thing is that we talk about everything under the sun, but when, it's, when we suddenly, when the conversation becomes something about values, they all turn to say, okay, what do you have to say? Because they can see that, hey, you are not an ordinary person, and yet you are so ordinary. There's spirituality in what you say, and, and there's a, a willingness to talk. Hallelujah. And that's how God opens doors. Sometimes it takes a long time to penetrate into a person, but you always sow seeds when it's possible, being naturally spiritual and spiritually natural. That's the gift God has called us to do. And in uh, closing, I want to just go back to this one scripture, and this scripture is about the vision of ICC, how we started. And the Bible says, when Jesus was asked, what is the most important thing? What is the most important thing? Just like I asked you today, what is the most important thing? And Jesus brought it down to this one thing. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And your neighbor, or love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. This is the greatest commandment. As a matter of fact, there's somewhere else where it says, if you've done this, you've covered all the law and the prophet. Hallelujah. All the law, all the law and the prophet. Glory be to God. Amen? This is the calling that we have in ICC. So when we come to church in ICC from uh, November, we're going to start this training pro process in November. Uh, next Sunday, we have a teaching. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cell group and why we need to do it and how to do it and how each one of you can be a part of it. And then the following Sunday, we have a guest speaker who's going to come and inspire us. And when that is over, we have the family Sunday in the first Sunday of no, uh, in, in November. We'll, give, we'll have a, a very nice, inspiring time together. And then from the second week of November, we're going to launch our School of Practical Christianity. Amen? Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this message that you've just seen. I really hope you were blessed. And if you are a believer, we thank you for joining us. And please continue to watch and be blessed and be encouraged. Maybe you're not a believer and you're considering becoming a Christian. You know, it's really not complicated. All you need to do is just say a simple prayer and receive Christ into your heart. You can do it by joining me in this prayer. All you need to do is say, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross. Jesus, I receive you into my heart for forgiveness of my sins and to be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, help me to be a wonderful Christian. Amen. Now that was a simple prayer, but if you really meant it, Jesus is living in your heart as your Lord and Savior. I encourage everybody watching this to be partners with us in the ministry. You can partner with us by praying for us. We covered the prayers of saints from around the world. You can also partner with us by telling somebody else about this link. Hopefully they too can be blessed and encouraged like you. And of course, you can also partner with us by supporting us financially, either one time or be an ongoing donor. Again, there's a link on your uh, screen that you can go and log in and find out how you can do that. And if this is probably the first and the last time I'm going to see you, I still want to pray for God's blessing over your life. If you're an ongoing watcher, stay blessed and continue to log in to getintouch.dk. God bless you all. Have a nice day. Bye.